Reloading my own ammunition has always fascinated me, but until now I've been slightly reluctant to get involved. Have I got the time, the patience? Will I blow myself up? And most importantly, will I really get more accuracy over factory loaded ammo? I've been given the chance to find out. I've enlisted myself on a reloading course run at Dauncey Guns in Wiltshire. They've seen a growing demand for home loading and advice, so they've added a classroom and reloading facility to the gun shop. Perfect for novices, and for those that have been loading for many years, it offers the chance for some serious load development. What are the main benefits to reloading, and what differences am I going to notice with the, with the okay. rounds I'm going okay. to create? Okay, I think there, there are several answers to that. One is, because your rifle is an individual, it will react differently to a factory round, to a custom built round. So you can actually build a round that precisely suits your rifle, rather than taking the factory offering, which they may vary the components and the mixes, you know. So, but you can build yourself a round that you know shoots out of your gun perfectly, and you can repeat that time after time after time. Add that to the fact that eventually it will save you money, or allow you to use component choices you could not get in a factory round. There's all those things in the mix. Plus, it's very satisfying, a bit like fly tying, to actually go and shoot a deer or whatever with a round you made yourself, so you complete the process front to back. So, just a few reasons there. And as men, we like stats, we like fiddling about yep. with technology, yep. so yep. it kind of ticks all of those boxes yep. as well. Yep. Yeah, you can go as anorak as you wish, you know, in chamber measurements, in measuring muzzle velocities, neck tension. You can really go to the nth degree of the science, but the, the aim is to get a consistently accurate round that you're happy with in your rifle and that you know you can build as many of those as you want time after time. Dave breaks the process down into bite-sized chunks. Ultimately, we're going to be dealing with explosives here in the classroom and after on the range. For safety's sake, I need to know exactly what goes where and how much of it. We start by measuring the chamber of the rifle and the cartridge. This information is critical and all the bullets I'll make from now on for this rifle will conform to these results. Dave then takes me through sorting the brass. I like the idea of recycling my spent cases, although some of it is beyond help. There's a couple here in these examples. One is clearly beyond use. It's got a split neck. We're looking for splits, we're looking for dents. This one, the neck's been dented, but we can recover that. If the, if the dent is severe, a pair of needle, nose pliers to get it about right, otherwise the dye will take care of that. So these ones, provided they show no other damage elsewhere, are perfectly usable. If a case is good, it goes back into the mix. It then needs resizing and trimming before we go anywhere near powder or primers. But when we do, the safety glasses are on. This is one classroom you don't fool around in. The techie stuff can be a bit daunting, but to my surprise, once you're up to speed with the terminology, it all starts to fit together. There are even moments when you leave all precision behind and use brute force and ignorance. You may want to get a bullet out of the case once you've loaded it. There are a few reasons for this. The bullet head might be seated too deep in the case, they might be leftovers from some test loads, or the bullet head might be damaged. The tool we use for this is a kinetic bullet hammer, and this is how it operates. As you can see, the bullet head has dropped into the bottom of the hammer, the powder has come out and it's left the case where it is, so we'll need to open this up now and clean it out. Hornady specialises in reloading equipment and they have a tool for every single part of the process, allowing rifle shooters like me to take new or fired brass and turn it into viable rounds of ammo that have a far stronger relationship with any specific rifle. After a day of demonstration, it's now my turn. After a huge day of learning and a massive amount of information yesterday, I'm now putting it into practice. I'm loading up some rounds for my 308, and to be honest with you, I feel like I'm a chef and having to follow lots of different steps in a recipe, I'm really hoping that I don't forget the eggs. Because I don't know which load will best suit the measurements and harmonics of my Blazer R8, I have to measure out a selection of testing loads. Taking Dave's sage advice, I make a detailed list. I need to be absolutely sure I know what's going down the barrel will work for the rifle. You can't just jump in at the deep end, you need to build up gradually. Okay, now we've got the brass where it needs to be, the primers are in and we're now charging the loads. We've looked at all of the different tables to work out what is the safe 
lowest load and we're going to do a pressure check at the high point. Somewhere within that there's going to be a sweet spot for the harmonics of the rifle. So we're loading up batches of five with a different weight of powder in them so we can find out exactly where the rifle's going to be firing best. It's quite a laborious, boring process but it's essential to get this perfect round for the rifle. And there we have it. My first ever 308 round that I've loaded myself. The proof of the pudding is in the eating, so I'd better get to the range and put my new box of 50 shiny tricks to the test. With Dave watching over my shoulder, I start putting rounds down range. The rifle feels good and the cases don't look stressed. I work through the loads until I feel we are seeing perfect rifle bullet compatibility. And so the moment of truth. This was the first group, which was 43 grains of powder. And then we moved over to this one. We went up to uh, 44 grains of powder. Then we took a bigger jump up to 45 and it, the group started to open up a little bit. So we dropped back down to see what the 44.8 did and it was, it was pretty much cock on, as we say. Um, so then I thought I'd do five rounds of the 44.5 and it's given me a very, very good group indeed. And uh, I've never had factory ammo do anything like that. So um, I'm very, very happy with that. To go out hunting with that is, you know, any fault with the shooting will be mine, not the ammo or the rifle. I'm very pleased with the results, but what about my tutor? I think he's done extremely well. What, what you've demonstrated is that hand loading for your gun with the selected components, you can get things almost in the same hole. Yeah, and you've also demonstrated that the load testing across a range of loads gives the dispersal then the tightening of groups that you would have expected. So I'm very pleased for you. I'm also very relieved that it came out right. I am a convert. The reloading experience has been highly rewarding and I'm astonished with the increase in accuracy. The next deer I stalk and take with ammo I have loaded will be a satisfying moment. For more information on how to reload your own ammunition, visit hornady.com. Subscribe to Team Wild TV for the best hunting, gear, airgun and bow hunting videos on YouTube.